we're going to continue our collision detection by, we already checked to see if it's touching at the top. I'd like to now see whether it's touching at the bottom of the screen. To do this, I'm going to say, well, if the bird's Y position is less than zero, or, and this is a mistake a lot of people that say, or greater than the graphics window height, because we know that what the graphics window height is. Now, this won't work. You've got to, again, state what you're comparing to. So this reads bird window is less, sorry, bird Y is less than zero, or greater than the graphics window height. We actually need to say if the bird Y position is less than zero or the bird's Y position is greater than the graphics window height. So you need to do these as two whole statements. And if we run that, we're just going to see um, one little error here and that the bottom of the ball can actually go through the grid. And we'd like it so that if the bottom of the ball or the bird as we know it uh, is touching the grid. So rather than just check the bird's Y position, which is the top of the ball, I'm going to actually check the bird's uh, the bottom of the ball, which is the bird Y position plus the size of the bird. And if we test that now, hopefully it will check for the top of the ball and for the bottom of the ball on the bottom line. Fantastic. Now we're going to go very, very complicated and do another check. And we're going to check to see if the bird is touching the tubes. And to do that, I'm going to pull across and look at the diagram that we were working with previously. Now I've added a ball to the diagram at the moment. Now it's important to note here when we're checking for the left and Y uh, positions of uh, the ball, we're going to need to check one first of all to make sure if it's hit, hitting, we need to say well is the ball in the boundaries of being in line horizontally with the uh, tubes, which is basically anywhere from about here to anywhere to about here, but as well as being in those lines, of course, if it's going through the gap, that's absolutely fine. We also then need to check to see if it's in Y position is higher than this or lower than that um, to make to see if the ball is being touched. We're going to start off by just checking the ball's X position. So by the end of this, I'm hoping that as soon as the ball, whether it's through the gap or not, it will check to see if it's in line with these tubes. So how do we start off with that? Well, bearing in mind we need to check to see if the ball's further along than this position here. I'm going to say if the ball's X position, so if the bird, I keep calling it a ball, but of course it will be a bird, if the bird's X position is greater than the tube's Y position, so we'll do, tube, sorry, not tube's Y, the tube's X position, And the bird's X position must be less than the tube's X position, and I'll explain this in a second, add the tube's width. Now that seems awfully confusing, so let's talk about what that's done. So the first part of our statement says, if the ball's um, position, which of course is noted at this top left corner where that white square is, if this position plus the width of the ball, which actually takes us to this position, so basically if the right hand side of the ball is greater than the left hand side of the tube, and it must be less than the right hand side of the tube, and that just checks to make sure it's inside this side of the tube, but it can't be outside that side of the tube, so it's got to be somewhere in these two boundaries. And that's not simple stuff, but as you can see again, the bird's X position must be bigger than the tube X. And actually, it should be the bird's X position plus the bird's width, uh, which is bird's size, I should say. And, and that bit is bigger than tube X and the bird's X position. And in this case, when we're talking about the bird's X position, we are literally talking about this left hand side is smaller than this position on the right hand side of the tube, which is actually just the tube's X position, take, uh, add, sorry, the width of the tube, which is what we've done here. The tube's X position, add the width of the tube, and that's just based on the bird's X position. Then, we'll 
reset again. Now remember, this isn't checking to see if the bird's actually is going through the tube or not. So any time it touches the tube at the moment, I'm hoping that our trigger will go off to say, yep, you're touching the tube. Perfect. Um, and this should trigger if I demonstrate, even if it's in the middle of the, well, not that my, uh, obviously my skills at Fluffy Bird aren't good enough to test this, but hopefully I can test see if the ball, uh, so that was definitely not in the middle of the, t it was not in the boundaries of hitting the tubes, but because of course we've only checked the X coordinate, um, that's what's happening at the moment. So rather than reset if we're checking the X coordinate, we're going to do something complicated here and try and nest some if statements. So I'm going to say, well, ignore this reset, we don't want to do that just yet. We're going to say if it is in that boundary, then check to see if we're touching it in the Y axis. So I'm now going to have a new if, which is inside the old if note. Let's just space that down a bit. And this time I'm going to say, well, if the bird's Y position is less than, and let's have a look at this now. I want to check to see if the bird's Y position, which again is this top row here, is less than this line here. Now that line there is simply wherever the Birds, uh, sorry, the top tube's Y position is, add the height of the tube, which will get us to here. So if the bird's Y position is less than the top tube's Y, add the height of the tube, which is tube height, I believe, tube H. Or it could be that it's hitting the bottom tube which would be the bird's Y position. Now be careful here, because the bird's Y position is the top of the bird here. We need to check the bottom of the bird here. So I'm gonna say the bird's Y position, which is here, add however big the bird is, bird size. And we need to check to see if that's touching this line here. Well, that's a bit easier this side, because it's actually just the bottom tube Y position. So if that is greater than the bottom tube Y position. Then, well, if both of those things are true, so if it meets the X position, if it's within the X position, then it checks to see if it's in the Y position. And if it's crossing both of those paths, then it means it must be touching it. So at that point, we'll run the reset. Now I've got to end this if, and this is where making sure your indentation being tidy is really nice. So I can see that this if statement is inside that if statement. And I can see that this end if ends that if. And if I just back up a little bit, uh, we can then see hopefully that this end if is actually ending this higher if. So we've got an if inside an if, which we call a nested if statement. Let's do a little test to see whether I can actually get the bird through the gap. Hopefully this won't be a 20 minute video while I uh, try and get the ball through the gap for some time. And this might be a little bit too challenging at the moment. No, we managed to get it through and to just test to see if I can make it crash as it's going through the tube just to make sure it's going off so if I can crash into the top yep that seems to work and if we try crashing into the bottom of the tube oh <laughs> well I would assume it works for now rather than waste your time uh, watching me play the game for a while hopefully by this point you'll be able to play your own